There we go. Okay, so we're just kind of continuing um, using substitution to find derivative or to find the antiderivatives in um, our indefinite integrals. So we're, it's indefinite because we do not have our bounds. Um, and when we do have our bounds, that's a definite integral. So for this one right here, we're going to let the denominator, but we're only going to let the part of the denominator that is inside the parentheses. So sometimes with this, you do have to do some trial and error here. So our u value here is going to be 16 minus x to the third. Okay, so our du dx is going to be negative 3x squared. Okay, so then we have to solve for dx. So I've got du equals negative 3x squared dx, and then du is going to be negative 3x squared equals dx. Okay, so I have not taken the integral yet, and so I leave the x squared. This right here is my u value, just this part right here. So then I'm going to have u squared, and then my dx is going to be du over negative 3x squared, okay? So this is my dx right here, and this is my u, okay? Now we are able to cancel out the x squared. What can I pull to the outside? Negative one third, good. Okay, so then we're gonna have a negative one third on the outside. And then I have um, u to the negative two. Okay, so all I did right here was a rewrite. Okay, I pulled this negative three that's in the denominator, so that makes it negative one third to the outside. And then I rewrote my u, squ u squared in the denominator as u to the negative two. Okay, so I'm gonna add one to that when I take the antiderivative. So I'm gonna have u to the negative one divided by negative one. This is an indefinite integral, so I have to have my plus c. Okay, and so now I end up with positive one-third, and it's u to the negative one so that means our u goes to the denominator. And so I have plus c. And then my net last part that I have to do <coughs> is plug back in my u value. So my final answer here will be 1 over 3 times 16 minus x squared. Q. Q. Yes, q. cubed plus c. Okay. <clears throat> now we are going to <coughs> do um, a definite integral. Okay. Are we ready to move to the next one? Okay. Here is the definite integral, and this right here is what makes it the definite integral because we have bounds. This one we're going to round to four decimal places. Okay, round to four decimal places. And as we start this, I want to remind you, this right here is theta. It is not u. Okay, that's what theta equals, not what u equals. Okay. We are going to let our denominator be our u. So that is theta minus sine of theta. Okay. 
So du d theta. Now remember, you're gonna think of theta the same way you would think of x, okay? So what's the derivative of theta? One, okay? And what is the um, derivative of sine? Good, so we're gonna have cosine of theta, okay? And so we are solving for d theta instead of dx, so we've got du equals one minus cosine of theta, d theta, and du over one minus cosine of theta equals d theta, okay? So now what we have is Okay, and remember, theta is going to equal 1, and theta is going to equal 2. Okay, so then I've got 1 minus cosine of theta over my u value, and then d theta is du over 1 minus cosine of theta. Okay. So here is my u value, and this is my d theta. Okay, so now our one minus cosine theta cancels, and I'm gonna rewrite this. Well, actually, I'm not gonna rewrite this because this is one over u, and what's the antiderivative of one over? Natural log. Natural log, okay. So I still have theta equals one and theta equals two of one over u du. We take the antiderivative of that and the antiderivative of that is gonna be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And I wanna to go to the next page, okay? Okay, can I go to the next page? Everybody got what they need? Okay. So my antiderivative here is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And I've just got that plus c right there because we're still dealing with our u value instead of our theta. Now I'm going to plug it back in. And so my u value is theta minus sine of theta. Okay, and that's the absolute value signs. Now this sign right here is my evaluate. Okay, and I'm back to theta. And so I've got from one to two that I'm evaluating. Wait, why should I see it when it's definite? <laughs> you, you definitely don't have to. What you could have done instead, I did it because it's a U value instead of the theta values. What you could have done you could have gone ahead and draw that line right there and you could have done theta equals one and theta equals two you. it it's reminding me that that one and that two represents theta not you yeah that's the only reason okay. yeah and um you know but once we get back to here you're good um if you put it here and a lot of times i do be sure you put that theta there just to remind your brain that you're not evaluate you're not plugging that into you you're, you've got to plug it back into theta okay so um we are talking about radians okay we are talking about radians and the reason that we know that these are radians is because we don't have a one degree and a two degree here okay so um if you're not sure ask i mean it's probably going to be radians but if you're not sure definitely ask um, with degrees, you're always going to have that degree symbol, okay? So make sure your calculator is in radians, and we are going to round to four decimal places. So I'm going to have the natural log of 2, and we've got the absolute value signs, 2 minus the sine of 2, okay, minus the natural log of 1 minus the sine of one, okay? 
So go ahead in your calculator and determine what two or the natural log of two minus sine of two. Okay. And keystrokes. Uh, is it second e to the x? It's or is it just ln? There's an ln button? Okay, so there's no second. So you're just going to do natural log, and as soon as you hit the natural log, what does it give you? Parentheses, okay? So then you're going to have 2 minus the sign. What does the sign give you? Another parentheses, okay? So then you're going to have to close the parentheses on the sign, and then you're going to have to close the parentheses on the log. So these are your keystrokes right here. So let's go to four decimal places. What is this right here? I did not get that. Make sure you're in radians. Oh, that was yeah, that's that. A lot of times, that's what it is. I got zero point zero eight six eight. Um, go. They always take my calculator in here. It, it's under mode. Yeah. Let me. Yes. Okay, go ahead and do it again. Make sure you got it. You're good with yours? 0 0.0868. Correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then we are subtracting and then put for this one, you're going to, for the second one, you're going to have the natural log. As soon as you hit the natural log, it gives you a parentheses, then you're going to have one minus sign. When you hit sign, it gives you a parentheses. So then you're going to have a one, and then you're going to have to close the parentheses twice. And what did you get for that value? Good. Has so everybody got the calculators? You got, Keandria, are you good with your, okay, you got it, okay. And so you're in, you're in, yeah. And definitely don't let that be the reason that you miss it, is because you can't get it in radians. Okay, okay, and then we end up adding these, and I have 1.9286. Okay. Okay. Okay, so right here, one just do one minus sine of one. Just do, just do this part right here. Okay, is that positive or negative? Okay, that value right here is what has to be positive. You're only taking the absolute value of this. You're not taking the absolute value of this. Okay, having an answer to a log that's negative is completely fine. What you can't have as negative is the index, the part that goes inside the log. This part right here is what can't be negative, okay? So, um, so we are not taking the absolute value of that because that the negative 1.8418 is this entire part right here, and that's okay. So we do not take absolute value? That's a great question. You would take the absolute value here if negative. If it gives you, um, if it's a negative value inside that natural log, you're going to get an error. 
So when you do natural log of one minus sine of one and it's in one minus sine of one is negative, it says error and that's how you'll know to go back. And so if you put it in like this right here and it gives you a negative value, you're golden. If you put this in right here and you get an error, that's when you've got to go back and take the absolute value. You can put the absolute value um, into your calculator. Um, I think it's just one more keystroke that we might mess up. And so I like to kind of keep that separate. Okay. Are we good? Are we ready for our last one? Okay. Now, this situation right here, um, do you remember this from Math 112? What can you remember about this kind of graph from Math 112? You had to graph this. Okay, it's not a parabola. What kind of asymptote would you have with this? Does anybody know? Is that a circle? It's not a circle. Okay. Let's graph it. Maybe. There's Desmos. There's Desmos. The degree of my numerator is greater than the degree of my denominator. So that makes a difference here. So let's do 2x squared plus 7x minus 3 divided by x minus 2. Okay. Anybody know what kind of um, asymptote we have here? Okay. Okay. Do you remember slant or oblique asymptotes? Do you guys remember that? Really? But you did it in high school. You did an equivalent to 112 in high school, yeah. I promise. <laughs> I promise you did. Okay, so there is a slant asymptote right here. Okay, so kind of going right here, there is a slant asymptote. Okay, so that's what happens. You have a slant asymptote when the degree of your numerator is greater than the degree of your denominator. Okay, so what's the degree of this right here? Two, and what's the degree of this right here? One, okay? So when that happens, that's when you have a slant asymptote. So degree of numerator greater than denominator. Okay, so we get to go back to one of our very favorite things. Okay, and this does not simplify. If it simplified, we'd have a hole, so we don't have a hole there. Okay, what we have to do is we have to do long division or synthetic division. I'm going to do long division just to remind you what long division is, um, but you can also do synthetic. Synthetic is, is, is fine to do as well. So, I have got to do long division with this. So I've got x minus 2, and that's being divided into 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. Okay? x times what is going to give me 2x squared? Good. Okay, so then I have 2x squared minus 4x. Okay, but what am I doing next? What do I have to do next? Correct, I have got to subtract and I have to subtract both terms. So I am subtracting this and I'm subtracting minus negative four X. Okay, this cancels and then I'm left with 11 X 
and I bring down my minus 3. x times what gives me 11x. Okay, so now I multiply. 11 times x is 11x. 11 times negative 2 is negative 22. But I am doing what? Good. Okay. So now I end up with 19. Okay. Whoops. So then I have plus 19 over my x minus 2. Okay. Now if I go back to this right here, where's and I put in 2x plus 11. Oops, there it is. That is what we call our oblique or slant asymptote. And it drives the graph. Okay, now we're not going to be asked to graph it or anything like that. Um, the other thing that I like to um, talk about with this particular one Look at your max and your min. What do you notice about your max and your min here? Okay, this point right here, is that a max or a min? It's a min. And this point right here, what's that? A max, okay? So my minimum value is 27.329. And my maximum value is what? Yeah. Yeah. So you have a greater minimum than your maximum. Correct. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So um, anyway, that's the, uh, what we're talking about here. But this is your oblique asymptote. So when you've got a situation where your degree of your numerator is greater than your degree of your denominator, you've got to, to rewrite this like this. Okay? And so now what we're going to do is now we're gonna find, we're gonna do the integration with our new function here, okay? And they're equal in value, all we did was divide. So I've got 2x plus 11 plus 19 over x minus two dx, okay? Now I can find the antiderivative of this, okay? So I'm going to have 2x squared over 2 plus 11x, okay? Plus 19, this is x minus 2, okay? So if I am just looking at this x minus 2, what's the antiderivative of this? If, I, if I'm looking at this as a rational. So think of this as 19 times 1 over x minus 2. What's the derivative of x minus 2? 1, okay? So then think of this as 1 over u. So what would the derivative or the antiderivative of that be? Good. Okay. So this is 19 times the natural log of this x minus 2. Okay. And this is no bounds. And so this is our antiderivative or we're our indefinite integral. This right here? Okay. So you're thinking about this the same way that we would think about u substitution. Okay? So think about our u substitution. This is 19 times 1 over x minus 2. Oh, you pulled the 19 out. Yeah, just pulled the 19 out. Okay? And then the antiderivative of x minus 2, that's where our natural log of x minus 2 comes from. It's right there. Okay, so the re and then actually we can simplify slightly. So I end up with x squared plus 11x 
plus 19 times the natural log of x minus 2 plus c. And that is my final answer right here because it's an indefinite integral. Um, I'd like for you to look at this question because you do have to do some manipulation and move it around a little bit. Okay? And so that's how you have to think about it. Uh, go ahead. Um, I mean, you, you could have for this part right here if you wanted to. Okay? Um, you just didn't have to because there's nothing else. I mean, the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1. Okay, and so you can think of this as u right here, and so this would be the natural log of u, okay, and then we just go back in. And so the only part that you would have to use u substitution is this part right here. Like you can take the um, integral of this and then add it to the integral of this and then do the u substitution right here if you wanted to. I thought like you would have to do it to the whole integral. You would not have to, no, because remember our, our integrals – can be added together, okay? And so you, what you are actually doing here is you're taking the integration of 2x dx, okay, and adding it to the integration of 11 dx, and then adding it to the integration of 19 over x minus 2 dx, okay? And so that's one of our integration rules is that we can do it separately. Okay, I have one more that I want us to do, and it is one where we do not eliminate all of our x values when we do it, okay? So, can I move off the screen? So, what I have here is I have um, 2x plus 4. <coughs> over x plus 3 dx, okay? And we are going to allow our denominator to be x plus our, our u value. So my u is going to be x plus 3. du dx is what? 1, okay? So dx is just du. Okay, so when I rewrite this, I have 2x plus 4 over u times du. Now, I can't do anything here because I still have x's. I can't immediately start doing my integration because I've got an x up here, I've got a u here, and I've got a du here. Okay, so I can't, I can't do it. However, what? You can solve for x. Correct. I can solve for x right here. <clears throat> okay, so if u equals x plus 3, what does x equal? u minus 3. Correct. Okay, so now I'm going to go right here and I'm gonna put in my u minus three, okay? And I haven't done any integration yet. I've just kind of manipulated the algebra. So now I've got two times u minus three plus four over u du, okay? And now I'm still gonna do some algebra before I start the integration, okay? So now what I've got is I've got 2u minus 6 plus 4 over u. Okay, then I'll end up with 2u minus 2 Okay, and then I'm going to do one more rewrite before I do my integration. So then I'm going to end up with 2 minus 2 over u. Okay? Are we good here? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Now it makes sense. 
You're good? Okay, so what I did right here is I did 2u over u, and so my u's canceled. Uh, okay. Then I did minus 2 over u. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So now I can do my integration. Okay. So the antiderivative of 2 is going to be 2u. Okay, here I'm just going to pull my negative 2 out. Okay, so I'm thinking of this as negative 2 times 1 over u. Okay, and what's the um, integration of 1 over u, or the antiderivative of 1 over u? Okay. Okay, and then I have plus c. And then I want to go back and put my x plus 3 in. So I have 2 times x plus 3 minus 2 times the natural log of x plus 3 uh, plus c. Sorry, guys. Um, so that's going to be 2x plus 6 minus 2 times the natural log of x plus 3 plus c. The 2x plus 4 up here? Uh, no, because it's division. So we don't have an integration rule for division. The reason that we could do it here is because this is 2x plus 11. There's no division there. Okay, and so for, for this one, we could rewrite it as, um, so we got, so we ended up with, 2x, oops, okay, and this is after we did our division. So I've got 2x plus 11 plus 19 over x minus 2, and all of this is what we're taking the, the antiderivative of. So because of our integration rules that we talked about real or super early on, this is the integration of 2x plus the integration of 11, plus the integration of 19 over x minus 2. And actually, I need to write dx right here for every one of them. Okay? And then here, I've got 2 times x dx, plus 11 times dx, plus 19 times 1 over x minus 2 dx. Okay, and so that's just our integration rules that we can pull this number out and then we can add individual integrations here because we're adding them all together. That's one of our integration properties. Here, we can't do that because this is addition on the top and then we are dividing by this down here. Okay, and so that... That's because, so you have to use u substitution here because there's not any, they're not individual monomials that we're adding together. They're not individual terms. We're, we've got a binomial divided by a binomial, and so that's why we have to go and do the u substitution earlier here. Okay? Okay. Um... Now, when I go back to earlier so that we can do some algebra. Okay. So, we are going back to look at earlier in the, the chapter where we had our rectangles. And we would look and we would add all of our, our rectangles together. Those are, no, that's not our. Let's see. 
looking for my summation rules. Here they are. Okay. So this is something that we, we don't really talk a lot about in um, pre-calculus algebra, and, and we probably should talk a little bit more about it, but it's, it's when we are adding together sums of numbers, when we're adding together sums of numbers, and it, these are our summation rules. And so you can follow a formula when I am adding numbers together, so this could be 1 to 10, okay? Or it could be 1 to 5. And what we do is we look at this I value, and then we take whatever this number is right here. So let's say it's 5. So if I am adding all the numbers together from 1 to 5, okay? All our numbers together from 1 to 5. So 1 to 5. That's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay? So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. What is that? 15. Okay. So then what we have right here is we have a rule that is going to get us this sum. Okay, so I would put my n value as 5 because that's how high I'm going. So I would do 5 times 5 plus 1 over 2. Okay, so 5 times 5 plus 1 is 30 divided by 2 is 15. Okay, now we can do the same thing if something is squared or something is cubed. So what this one is asking us to do, if we were doing 1 to 5 here, that would be 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. Okay? And go ahead and do that on your calculator. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. So that's going to be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 25. Okay. Yes, 55. Okay. So then we can use this formula to do it as well. Okay. So I have 5 times 5 plus 1 times 2 times 5 plus 1 over 6. Okay. That's our formula. Uh, so 5 times 6 times 11, okay? So 5 times 6 times 11 divided by 6. What do you get? 55. 55, okay? So these are our summation rules. What we want to do in calculus is we're taking a function, and we are finding the rectangles as those rectangles approach infinity. So our n value right here is approaching infinity. That's what we're doing. So we're going to use these summation rules to show us why this works. Okay? Now, what I want you to do right now and then go ahead and, and take a break um, during this time. What I want you to do right now is I just want you to find the integration with the definite integral. That means we're going to have bounds from 0 to 3 of 9 minus x squared dx. Okay, you know how to do that. Okay, so I want you to do that right now, and I want you to run to the restroom. So that's going to be... Um, at 10.20, we'll come back. Okay? What's the little...